The following is a bonus episode of The Dental Guys. Well, welcome back to The Dental Guys. And we are, of course, live from Spear Summit 2018 out in Scottsdale. And we've got, uh, got a pretty special guest on right now. It's somebody that uh, you know if you've seen the show before. Episode 66, we had uh, Ricardo Matrani on. And uh, that was one of the best, still still the best show title we've ever had, The Evil in Dentistry. Uh, and just the title, right? Just the, just the I mean, the show, <laughs> the show is okay. That's but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a great show because it captured a lot of what has made, I think, your teaching style so so good is that you you know you, the passion came through as to how you felt and you know I think our, our our discussions yesterday on day one they really centered or it kind of just kept coming out this idea of of this community that we have here at Spear being a community it's a family it's an atmosphere where people come and they want to learn but they also want to encourage each other and 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 build each other up. And today, you know, we, we're talking a lot w- about never stop learning. Yeah. You know, continuing education is, is one way of putting that, but it's really, it's this push toward never, never stopping. Um, and, I, and I just want to ask you a little bit about that is, you know, in your, in your own career, in your own life, you know, what are some things that you're really excited about right now, learning more about, like yourself? You know, what subjects right now to you are just really pushing you? Um, and then just in a general sense, you know, how do you think people should figure out what is the next thing that they wow. need to be looking at? I know those are broad questions, but I'm interested to see what your thoughts are. They are incredible questions. Um, in fact, I'll tell you, this is how my lecture starts tomorrow. So we, we, uh, we've never been so bombarded with such high volumes of information. And uh, what really makes it even more compelling is that it's not only the volume of information that we get through our devices 24 seven, you know, it's the velocity, Mm. the speed at which that information comes our way and the complexity of that information. And so it's pretty overwhelming. You know, it boils down to (coughs) drowning in information, starving for knowledge. Mm. And if you think about it, if we don't create, it's like walking into a toy store. You're a kid and say, well, what do you grab? Everything looks so appealing, you know? So what's, what's the next thing that I want to grab and enjoy? Yes. Because there's gotta be that enjoyment part. Right? Information overload. Information overload, you, you better believe it. I mean, look at the way that we function with like social media. I mean, you go, how people, if you look at how people, um, connect with Instagram or Facebook. They, they're scrolling. Yes, the consumption is the rate. Yes. And so now what catches your eye? What catches your mind? Where, where do you, okay, say, this is good stuff. Now I want depth. Mm. Not just like, pfft. Right, not superficial. Correct, because, um, you know, if, if, if you want to have the broader piece of knowledge, I mean, you, you won't have the depth. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want to go in depth, then you will neglect perhaps seeing more of a 360. So that's the, I believe that's kind of like the challenge. Mm. But I also believe though it's you gotta fight that autopilot and make a conscious effort of um, what do you want to how do you want to seize your day, mm. and pretty much on a day to day basis. So, do you have somebody that comes to you, like somebody that you are close to that says, hey? What do you think about this? Challenges you? Huh. Yeah, do you have people in your, your life? That in your you've circle. You, you, very close circle. Like, I, I have people that I've kind of let in that nobody else knows. Sure. But, but they... They'll call you out? They call me out. They're like, you know, I disagree with that, Wes. You need to, you need to do this, or you need to consider this. Or, you know, that's hard because that's constructive criticism. And social media is the opposite of that. It kind of is confirmation bias. You know, we, we see the things that we like and we, we can choose to avoid the things that are a little bit uncomfortable. Do you know, so do you think it's people around you that, that push you to, to challenge, challenge you to, to do more? That would be the ideal scenario. If the people around you feel comfortable to challenge you and the other way you feel comfortable of being challenged. And I'll take it, I'll, t- I'll tell you how I've taken it to the next level. 
uh, if you come and I'd love to host you at some point in my practice, in one of our practices, um, I have a printed question mark in one of the walls. Mm. So, so that it works as a reminder for everybody that we cherish, we embrace, uh, you know, listening to people asking questions all day long, like, like challenge of the status quo. <clears throat> yeah, ask me. Ask. Yes, ask, ask me. You know, my hygienist that I recently hired, John, mm -hmm. um, she came out of a practice that was, um, she act, it was, you know, sometimes when you hire somebody away that's practiced somewhere for a while, yeah. like she came to me and she was like, you know, She's like, the first day I was here was the best day of my dental hygiene practice. And I was like, whoa, why? She's like, because you took the time to teach me because I was asking questions. She said, what? And I told her, I said, I want you to ask as many questions as possible. Mm. And th that threw her off because that, she that, was not, not the way she was. She, yeah. she couldn't. She, she was like, what? Do so you have to give that permission? Oh, my God. And, and the way you, you know, uh, embrace it. You were asking about knowledge, then knowledge comes nonstop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how, so we just did a module, filmed it last, uh, last month. In fact, the, I, I put together this module because I thought it was important for our community to start thinking differently a bit. The name of the module is, are we asking the right questions? Because mm. mm. I'll tell you this much, we, um, we need, and this is where, where it starts, I believe, we need to build the asking question muscle because we lose it. I'll give you some data, which is pretty compelling. And, and you, this, you, will, you would have never known that I would know this information. <laughs> but this is, this is how, this is what you guys do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you understand. You're we doing, understand you're each doing, other. You're doing it again, man. You do, you do your homeworks in ways that it's... Well, I was getting ready to say, I've read the book, <laughs> uh, Great Leaders Ask Great Questions. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a great book. So yeah. lay it on us. Lay, lay, it, on. lay the hear, knowledge I on want, us. I want to hear the knowledge. <laughs> so... You guys have young kids, right? Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. 13 and 9. And yeah, 13, 11, and 7. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you, which age do you think is the age in which, you know, humans ask the most amount of questions? Oh, man. What's, what's, what's like the number? Like, hmm. I'm going to say four. You hit yeah. it on, you yeah, hit four it on the five. head. It's exactly four ways. Good for you. What happens after four? It just drops down. Hmm. And... Um, there are many hypotheses behind this. Um, one, one of them is perhaps us as parents fail mm. to entice or to, um, you know, how should I say, promote that they're asking qu question mode that just, just keeps on going. So mm -hmm. perhaps we are a bit to blame as parents. For, for sure, the school is to blame. School systems reward not critical thinkers. Correct. They reward. Okay, you accumulate some knowledge, right. and the exam will show me how much you've learned. Right, regurgitation of knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. And so right there, um, there have been like meetings of uh, presidents of universities that they get together and they say, well, what we need to do is to have students be able to frame questions better. And we need to do that because we're not getting it. And this is now presidents of colleges in the U.S. Mm. It's, cr it's crazy how that, that, that goes. And so... Ultimately, what we need to do is to we need to rebuild that muscle back. Mm. Because when you stop asking questions, all of a sudden, how do you how do you start asking questions? Well, and don't you think you start forming your opinion based on what you're just seeing? Mm -hmm. And if it's that knowledge overload or the information overload, you just accept it. Well, and I want to. You're not even. Yes. You just accept yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. You accept it, and I think that 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 kind of goes into to what we maybe wanted to talk about even more in depth is you know we've made this comment several times you know facebook it turns out is not a peer-reviewed journal <laughs> you know <laughs> it surprising maybe as that might be to some uh and so making clinical decisions based upon that information that you are just bombarded with you start to feel i think like you know, there are some people that are just always doing these crazy cases mm -hmm. and they're always mm -hmm. successful and it's easy. And, you know, you just kind of get into this, this, you know, mindset of, of what either, what am I doing wrong that I'm not seeing the successes or, or, you know, I just need this shortcut to do these things right now mm. because I want to do these things right now. And, you know, you're going to be talking a little bit about that. I think in your lecture yes. about how that relates to, yes 
terminal dentition. Correct. And so tell us a little bit about how all, do you think this information overload, this, this uh, kind of bombardment is, is pushing treatment decisions? You, you bet it is. You know, I, I like that information overload. I also like this term that we, we are now all, we were all exposed, I guess, uh, last year. And it's, I have to give President Trump every credit for this term, which is fake news. Uh. We, all, we all hear it, and it's so true, there's fake news. But everything is fake news. doesn't matter who you hear, it's going to be fake. Right. Potentially fake, right? And so I believe that it is such a good um, term to have under our radar because now it allows us to challenge everything that we hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right there, if we know it's, if, if we're thinking that this, this is fake, then I'm challenging it and I'm mm -hmm. asking questions. So I think from that end, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we, we start thinking about, yeah, I mean, we're bombarded with stuff. Don't eat it up. Mm -hmm. Challenge it. Yes. Challenge it. Mm -hmm. and, and, is that offensive today, though? Like, do you think that challenging to, like, has been, is creating more offensiveness? I mean, we just heard somebody come up to us and, and before, right. and he said, you know, I don't even like to go on there and post anything challenging. Right. to a question because I don't want to come across as being offensive. That's basically what he said, right, right John? Well, the answer to your question is, and you just said it, is I mean, you cannot please everybody. Some people will say, oh my God, you know, they're, they're, they're crossing the line. Uh, but on the other hand, if you don't do it... Right, who will do it? We just said we want people yes. in our life to challenge us. Yes. Right. Otherwise, where's, where's progress? Progress will only come from challenging. Right, so you, you've cool. surrounded your, yourself with high-level people. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Is that your challenge? It's, it's the only gift. If I were to say that I have a gift, it's the, once you understand what comes your way, I mean, my mentor, which I'm, uh, I have a, a privilege to say I have a ton of men mentors, but my Ralph Udells, who, who put that UDAP program together back in the 60s, 70s, he was receiving his a Life Achievement Award from the Seattle Study Club Network in, you know, in Seattle at the uh, Sixth Avenue Theater. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal when they give you like a Life Achievement Award. So you have the opportunity after having like a couple minutes standing ovation to say something that's really inspiring, right? Mm. And so the guy, you know, walks up to the podium and he says, let me share with you the secret of my success. Mm. And he starts talking about his mentor who's Salz Luger, who's this guru of periodontics, who was his, his mentor as well. He says, when I finished my program, uh, Salz Luger came to me and says, Ralph, make sure you surround yourself with people that are better than you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Thank you very much. Drops the mic, leaves the podium. Wow. Boiled it all down. That's awesome. The one thing. And so I was mm. blessed enough to have him as a mentor. If that's what he had to say the day he's receiving one of the coolest accolades. Yeah, you I'm, better I'm chew like, on that. Oh my, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, that's... The so make point. it a priority yes. to do that. And, and I think that that is where there's a lot of, you know, insulation in dentistry from, from that. It, or it's easy, I should say it's easy to insulate yourself and be on an island and not do that. And I think that's one of the great things about, say, Summit is, again, you're, you're surrounded by people that are here for, I think, mostly that reason. They want to surround themselves by the smartest people in the room and be challenged. Uh, but there's, there's many that, that just kind of insulate. Mm -hmm. and, then they, and then again, you have this information out there that's telling you things. And it's, I don't know, it, it's, it's a different type of challenge because it's not really a, it's not a challenge of reality. It's not like somebody's holding you accountable. You know, somebody can hold you accountable and say, how, how's that going over there? Like we just saw uh, Steve Chu just a minute ago and immediately he remembered the last conversation he had with us. He's like, so how's that going with that particular implant system? How do you like that? How's that working? What are you seeing? I had seen him, I had only seen him for five seconds and immediately he remembers this conversation. So what's going on with that? Tell me about, and I'm just like, man, you know, he's, it's like accountability yep. built in. That's awesome. And that's something that we need, we need more of. Well, so you know, I think a lot of people turn to these other outlets, be it social media or, or some forum somewhere, because they, 
they lack the knowledge of how to acquire mm-hmm. a challenge mm-hmm. or a mentor. So <clears throat> where do they go, Ricardo? Because that's what we hear is like, I don't have anybody to challenge me. I'm in this bad situation. And, you know, it's just like complaint after complaint. Where do they go? And how do they find a challenge? I guess there's, there's got to be a, a little bit of a soul search mm. in which you... So you, you, you talked about insulation. And mm-hmm. the, the reality is, I think it all starts by embracing the fact that what we do... And, and, and Courtney Levine yesterday, by the way, said it beautifully in her lecture. She said, what we do is tough. Being a dentist is tough. Again, what, what transpires through posts and social media is almost, you, it almost sounds like there's a glamour. Mm. And, it, and you know, at the end of the day, everything we do is a choice. Mm. It's how you choose to see it and how you, how you choose to you know, embark on your day. Um, but if you start your day saying, this is, this is tough, but um, I'm gonna make it through the day and I'm gonna make it count, mm. then that's where you build a brick by brick. Kind of thing and that's how also you're able to you know get knowledge that starts being meaningful and is taking you somewhere do you think you can do this online you know do you think that it needs to be uh in person does it need to be a local group i, I think at this point it's got to be a combination combination yeah because i mean we know that we're, we're, we're wired that way mm-hmm. we know online is here to stay and mm-hmm. And I'm, I would push for the online just because um, as an educator, I can tell you that when I embraced, you know, the online part, mm-hmm. it's as challenging as it gets for me as a communicator, you know, to have, uh, to put together information that's going to be online and I won't see the audience. Yes. But the same way with you guys, you, you had to understand this language of podcasting. You had to understand this universe in which you're not seeing your audience, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna say something crazy, but you're feeling the audience. And, and the only way that you're feeling is that you know you're being felt by an audience. Yeah, right. And you and feel the same way, I'm sure. Yes. With, and feedback that you get where you, you, know it's work, where you know it's connecting. So going back to feedback, and you, and you mentioned a while ago, <clears throat> is this good or bad if people are saying that, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you're crossing the line. You, you are happier being when you realize you cannot please everybody Mm. that is so good (laughs) that's i mean it's so simple that is so so simple but it is so true because the first say five to six years of my practice every time a patient (laughs) would leave i felt bad Yeah. yeah you know whatever reason it was i felt bad what have i done wrong what have i done and i would go home and i would tell Laura, like you know these patients that we always have had they're gone and they left over whatever and now I'm a happier person right? when people leave because I, you know what I say is can't be everybody's dentist. Yeah, can't please them all. Can't, can't please be anybody's. And I'll tell you as an educator what happens. I mean, yesterday we had, uh, we kicked off the day with a visiting faculty, which is, as, as you know, the, the coolest group. That's yeah, over it's over 100 awesome. guys that come are so committed and they, you know, they put their time and effort to be in those workshops and they're just incredible. And so Greg asked me to, to do a little talk that I've, that I've been doing. I, um, I did my crossover lecture, if you will, uh, which is, has, has a cool story behind it. But I, anyway, I have a, this TED talk, mm. TEDx mm. talk. It's, unfortunately, it's in Spanish. Um, ho- hopefully, it'll get translated soon. Um, it's got a, close to a quarter of a million views. So, so, oh, it's, wow. so it's getting somewhere. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it's, it's a neat piece that I uh, put together. I, well, at least I think it's a neat piece. And if you go to the YouTube channel, you know, you'll see the reviews. Some people hate it. <laughs> right. And they're right there. Yeah. You, you take them in. Yeah. So, okay. You know, every time you do something, you're exposing yourself to having somebody to be critical about it. And it's a choice how much you take that in and how much it bothers you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Does it roll off or does it, does it, does it help you be better or right. how do you accept it? Right. It's a choice. It's a choice. Just like you said, you start your day figuring it's all built. Your whole day is built on choices. Yeah. How you react, how you show up. But we need to be okay with that, that challenge to ourselves. And we need to also, 
I think, be better about challenging things that we see that right. are that are not. Uh, and I think one, one the of right the, one of our toughest challenges as dentists is when we when we do our clinical dentistry, we are the kings or the queens of our castles. Yeah, and so you may choose not to be challenged, mm. and you may choose to say, okay, this is what I do, and some of the, my dentistry is I'm pretty proud about, but we're all. We all have these skeletons in the closet <clears throat> that we're not that proud about. And we, we typically will choose to hide those. Mm. But that right there insulates us. And that right there makes us, how should I say, um, not that prone to accept criticism if we ourselves are not embracing the fact that we're failing here and there. Absolutely. Does that make sense? And oh, that yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah, I mean, those are the times when I send, you know, Wes a little text message with a couple photos and just go, man, you know, this just sucks. Yeah. You know, this one didn't go how I wanted it to go. You know, like, what would you have done here? Or how would this? And sometimes, you know, you, there's, there's nothing that you could do. Well, you know, but like, sometimes but you're, you, but you're asking, what you're asking you different. And yeah. that, there's your growth piece. Yeah. Right there. There's a growth piece. And yeah, I think, you know, one thing that's great about having John and I talking all the time like this is that we're better. I sure. told John, was it two years ago after we started the podcast? I mean, we we said we'd do it for six months, and we said we'll try it, you know, and see what happens. And we we had sent six months. We said, do you want to continue doing this? And we sure. had gotten some feedback, and and then a year goes by, and I told John, I said, you know what, John? I said I'm a better dentist. Yeah. Because of you. Oh yeah, and that's the same for me. And I think that that's all about how, how, how cool is that? Yeah, how that's cool so is that? Cool. Because you you start to feel that you know somebody's not only they're sharing what they what what they're doing what they're learning and their passion but you feel safe and i think that's the thing it's this like safe place that we need with someone or somehow that we can feel safe enough to share what we're struggling with and let me just take it to the next level by you saying that to john i mean you are essentially transpiring i think one of the most beautiful human expressions which is a a gratitude expression. Mm. You know, I, it's, as crazy as this may sound, there's not a single time in which I get together with Greg or with Frank that once again I say, I don't have words to describe how grateful I am for you guys taking mm. me in and being a part of this. Just just yesterday, I, I went back and I told them. Um, and as redundant as I may sound, it's the only way that I can feel that... Um, I'm opening my mind, you know, towards growing in even, even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so being grateful, I think, uh, allows... It also tells that person that, you know, you want more. Right, that you're open. You're open now. Yeah. You're an open book. Come on, tell me more. Yes. You know, yes. and, and everybody just feels better, <clears throat> you know, because of that. Well, and that's what you want. You go back to, you know, having this as a part of your practice. Yeah. Because if that is the way you are with your team, mm -hmm. oh, man, they get that. You know, the team is waiting, I think, for for the cues from the leader right. to say, how do you when something doesn't go well? How what is your response to that? You know, are you throwing stuff against the wall or, you know, are you sitting down with everybody and going, you know, Let's talk about this. How can we be better at this? How can we learn from this? How can our systems be better? Mm -hmm. You know, how can our, our patients get better care? You know, what classes do we need to go take? And, and that is, I think, really in the end, um, some of the, the most successful practices I see. Those That's are the empowering ones where, to the team. Right. They, the yeah. team feels comfortable going to the doctor and saying, you know, I, I don't know that we're, this is as good as it could be, you know? And then you, you see growth happen like crazy oftentimes because everybody has... Uh, again, a comfort zone, a safe place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as dentists, we, we, that's where a lot of times we, we see maybe as we talk to dentists and we see this difficulty with, um, you know, because oftentimes we are, it's about, we, we can be, we can have an ego. Oh, really? Just a Dentist? little, occasionally. Dentist? Yeah, I know it's the hmm. first time you've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so, so when, you, when you can't get that out of the way, it holds you back in many, many, many ways. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm immune to that. I mean, it happens to me all the time, but you have to try to get it out of the way. And the team sees that, mm. they see that. And the patients, I think, see that too. It's, it's something that we, we struggle with. And it's something we have to work, work with every day. And 
you know, when you, when you talk about team, um, it's the imperfections of the flow of a day that make a team better. Hmm. Um, That's well said. And the reality is there's this amazing book that I totally love. And in fact, I have like a, a big, big sign on a, one of the walls of our office uh, talks about the ideal team player. This is a book by Patrick Lenzioni. Same, same, oh, yeah. Same yeah. Th- dysfunctions of a team. Yeah. yeah. Same guy that wrote the dysfunctions. Yeah. 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 So, so good. It's like we, my favorite. We, we have like <laughs> four, four uh, of my staff members here at the summit. I would later on, I'll just do a little game with you. Just challenge them and ask them to you know, spell out those five dysfunctions. I've, yep. I've literally inoculated them with those yes. five dysfunctions. Yeah, because the same way. We're that has given way. me, you know, one language, one common language that we can pretty right. much talk about how dysfunctional we are. And we are dysfunctional. Yes. Yes. We say it sometimes. We're like, is there a lack of trust right now? <laughs> 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 right. We, that will come up. Or, or avoidance account of accountability <laughs> yeah. or, or intention to resolve let's have some or fear of conflict. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let's yeah. have some conflict. They're yes. like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Like, He's talking about it again. Yeah. So that same yeah. guy that wrote that book, Patrick Lenzioni, wrote this other book called The Ideal Team. Brand. Okay. And I haven't read that. Oh, Dude, my God. You, you got it? No. You I read it last read. year. It's okay. amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, again, three mm. very simple characteristics. First, you've got to be humble. Second, you got to be hungry. Third, you got to be smart. Smart, mm. but smart as an in interpersonal you right. know, ability to communicate with Correct. one another. Be able to like, hey, who's this? Yeah. And and the, the beauty of also talking to your team about this is that they gauge each other. And so sometimes, if if you have to let somebody go, it is so transparent. Yep. It's such a, s- a smooth way of scanning how we behave. Mm. So let's say I had to let Wes go. What was he lacking? out of those three mm. Mm. so it's so clear cut yes it's very very clean it's simple it works and you know sure enough you say it once you say it twice these are things you have to say almost every day because mm. you lose perspective and lo and behold you, you stop being humble mm. you talk about ego that's right there being humble is not about saying you know oh I'm, I'm nobody right being humble is about knowing that you're you're amazing, but you don't need to be saying it every day to everybody. <laughs> exactly. So good. Exactly. Yeah, not being afraid to speak up. Not, yeah. you know. Being willing and being willing to learn. Being willing Again, to it learn. It comes back to the beginning of this conversation. It's being okay with the fact that I still have a lot to learn. You know, even though we're at a high level, we can always go to a higher level. We're getting ready to speak to Amy Morgan mm-hmm. uh, later on wow. about some of these very yeah. same concepts. and. And I feel like what you said there about letting a team player go, these concepts, it, it totally rule. Like I told John, I said, I went through this hiring process for reception. And I said, you know, the team knows those three because I've in, <laughs> inundated them with these two yeah, books. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. they've, all, they've all went that way. And so they all come back from lunch. And I, you know, I was like, hey, let's go out to the dumpster. I was got my, my stock girl, and she's like, you know, very wise. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, what do you think? And she's like, well, she did this one thing. She said this one thing. And she said, it's not humbleness. Hmm. And she, I was like, Man. And that right there is a, the one red flag because that's the one, the one of those three that you cannot teach. You can't. Yes, I completely agree. That is your, either you're wide or not. Yeah. And so that we just talked about that <laughs> probably less than an hour ago because we were just asking this question because we want to ask Amy later to say, can you teach that? Because I, oh, I, 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 I I'm agree. dying to see if she's got the, the, uh, the what? magic bullet. The well, magic we, bullet. we think, yeah. we think, and I said this, or I hypothesized, I said, John, you know, they say a kid is bent or a certain way before the age of seven, you have this time frame mm-hmm. to really instill about how a child's character. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if humbleness, yeah how long it takes to correct so you talked a while ago about you know now feeling okay with having let go patience yeah Mm -hmm. and there's got to be something that tells you okay enough i'm 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 not gonna um Mm -hmm. put up with this well same same deal here you try your best to maybe you have like a remedial first time they show lack of humbleness and you try your best to communicate but then you think you're such a good leader, you will be able to convert everybody into being mm. ideal. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think I was that way at one point in my yeah. career. And, and don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. Because what, what we try, again, as leaders, I think the, the, the one thing that inspires a team is for 
for the team to feel that the leader is fair. Mm. One, of the thing, one of the coolest things about me coming to Spear, and, and um, I can tell you, I would be so surprised if you ran like a survey on people that would have an opinion on Kaleem Manji, who's our CEO. Mm. You know, it's crazy. He's, he's 10 years younger than me or more. It's so, so cool to learn so much from that guy. Mm. But the one thing he has, he's fair. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I'd be so surprised if I heard anybody saying that he's not fair. He, he, he almost does like, you know, mental gymnastics every day to be as fair as it gets. Right. And so that's very inspiring because if your team feels that you're fair, you know, and if you let somebody go because either they were lacking, you know, mm -hmm. humility, they were not hungry enough, or they were not smart enough, mm -hmm. that is so clear cut to read. And they say, okay, you know what? She had to go, he had to go. Yep. Yeah. And call it a day and learn yeah. from your rehire. Because more, more often than not, we know they don't have it the day we hire, but we need that person to come in because we need to fill that spot, either in reception or assistant or what have you. Yes. And we, we shoot ourselves on the foot when we do that wrong decision. John, this has been, I hate to end this. <laughs> I know, it's so good. It's so good, as always. I mean, there's some great one-liners in here. I probably have, we might have a better show title. Show title. I know we one. might actually have a better yeah. show title than the last one, which yeah. is crazy. Well, <laughs> we could sit here and talk about this topic for hours because it's near and dear to our hearts. Mm. You know, what I think about this, I know we're live on the broadcast right now. I want you to talk a little bit about just for just for 30 seconds, yep. okay, about what you're speaking on today. Mm. And, it's actually tomorrow. 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 I'm sorry. So. 30 seconds. <laughs> well, okay, I'll set a timer. Well, I mean, uh, however <laughs> however long you want. Yeah, however long okay. you we want. We want to be respectful of your time. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, okay, here you go. So, you know, it's funny. When, when you um, give a title for a lecture that you don't have yet, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous, right? It's, it's dangerous, and what I've learned over the years is to keep it as generic as possible. Did you do that? Did you set the title before you had the lecture? Did you set the title before you had the lecture? You bet. <laughs> that is awesome. Good. Talk I, about challenges. Yes. But, 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 but I kept it so generic, I, I pretty much, right. I give myself slack. Yep. Like, any time that I ask me to give a lecture, for, for me, the, the, the best title I could give is, you know, uh, let's go with uh, interdisciplinary dynamics, mm. a comprehensive approach to treatment planning. You can, you can say anything you, you want. Anything you want. Any, that, that, that turns into, you know, <laughs> floss <right>. technique. <laughs> Awesome. Good point. I'm learning. I'm learning right now. Right. How to, yeah. So, so but, but this one, you know, I, I felt, so <clears throat> it had to be with terminal dentition because um, it's one of our near and dear topics. So I said, terminal dentition, where do we draw the line? Mm -hmm. And I didn't exactly know what, what type of line I was going to be thinking about when I, when I literally would do this, sitting down and putting the lecture together. But I knew that, again, drawing a line could mean depends on what line you want to draw. It could be digital versus analog, where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, um, four implants versus five implants. You could do anything yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. And so ultimately it became, where do you draw the line is, so terminal dentition is a term made by us, the dentists, right? We decide when it's teeth should no longer be in the patient's mouth. Mm -hmm. And we decide utilizing parameters that sometimes are pretty subjective and the, they are all over the place. So what it ended up happening is I dove in. I mean, I, I really, you know, took, I don't think when was la the last time I took so long to put a lecture together mm. because I just found that there was so much stuff that I was, that was needed to put together and to have people think about. And I'm not claiming I have you know, the holy grail now. But what, I, what I'm excited about is that at least audiences that, that sit through the lecture will have things to think about before they say, I'm removing those two. Mm. That's good. Because if we take it back to that evil in dentistry we spoke about last time, which was implants are forever, and we, now we know that if they're not forever, we shouldn't so lightly be just taking teeth off, out and, and doing implant support restorations if teeth are a good solution. Or we, can, we can keep those teeth. And one of the things that I, that I find going back to social media is that there's like a festival out there of people just showing how 
mm. an incredible transformation. <clears throat> right. Like, like the, it's almost like a extreme makeover, if you yes. will. It is. Um, entire, entire treatment modalities just, just combined to, just with... Just to tease you a little bit, I mean, one term that I got from social media after one guy showing what he did, essentially, you know, a class three patient with pretty much full complement of teeth. Mm. And you see the before and after, you don't see much, you don't see x-rays, but essentially took everything out and did, you know, uh, hybrids in both arches. And somebody told him, oh my God, that is so cool. That is, and the term he coined was, Implant nathic, like from orthognathic surgery, it's implant nathic. Mm. You do implants and you're able to do orthognathic surgery. And yep. pe and people go, that's a cool term. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> right. So I'm calling out mm. these type of things. I think somebody needs to. Yes. And I, that's exactly it. So I, I don't know how. And I'm. I'm this I, is the challenge I, I we're talking about. Right. Yes. I, right. I've got goosebumps right now. I know. Now. I know. This is the challenge because so it's a big problem. What right I'm now. trying to do is kick the beehive yes good create tension just don't kick mine do you have a beehive i have seven so don't kick mine yeah he has real beehives don't yeah. get him down oh don't we're not going down people that know that trail. on the show we're not too, going down so that rabbit trail. yeah he mail orders bees it's really bad but anyway <laughs> so but you no know, you someone needs to kick that beehive because it's everywhere yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere and so i decided to, to, to go for it and uh go for it but beyond going for it i'm i i'm trying to provide some sort of algorithm in assessing remaining That's good. teeth. So there's a system. Yes. Okay. And the coolest thing that I can say is that it ties in with EFSB, baby. Yes. Well, naturally. Don't forget airway. <laughs> <laughs> but this orthognathics in, in Impl plastic implanathics. or implanathics, this is, uh, I mean, we're seeing, again, entire institutes. We're seeing, yep. you know, entire treatment modalities that are, you know, the patient's being fit into that treatment modality rather than the other way around. And it is... I mean, the, the, there was a lot of discussion at this year's AO mm. about this exact concept of, yep. uh, you know, and, and Frank, of course, a couple of years ago at the AO spent, you know, did the keynote talking about, well, let me show you horizontal root fractures that are now 20 years out, the tooth's still fine, and really challenging that it's not too late for teeth. That's right. And, and so I, it's a great thing that people have to understand that it's, it's not just this, but when they see, again, oh, information overload, they see case after case after case after case, and it is beautiful. In some of these cases, you oh, go, yeah. oh, it's beautiful. Well, this is what you're missing if you're not here at the sun. Yeah, exactly. You know, I oh. mean, this is what you're missing. You're missing <laughs> Ricardo Matrani and talking about these things. Kicking the beehive. Uh, kicking the beehives today. That's probably the title. That, that is maybe it. probably the title. <laughs> I think we found it. I think we found it. Um, but, you know, for those that are watching right now, I want you to like and share this across uh, your platforms because I feel like that this was a good talk. And mm -hmm. also I feel like that um, if you have questions, uh, we want you to send those to us through the comments section there. We'll respond if, if they're good questions, right? Right. right. And uh, if you, you have a question for Ricardo, we'll see if we can get that to him. And um, this has been a great broadcast, John. And yeah. thank if I you. Just, if I just may say one, one last thing, because I'm, I'm thinking right now, okay. a potential, oh, yeah. <laughs> potential repercussion of hitting the beehive. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm, it's I'm okay. Some stings. So, so, so long as, as people hear this out and hear it clearly. You need to have guts also to post whatever you post. And mm. so for each one of our colleagues out there that are sharing what they're posting, um, I applaud them. Mm. You know, regardless of me being, uh, agreeing with the treatment plan or agreeing what they're doing, it's gutsy. And it's, uh, it's information that we um, can feel inspired about. Mm -hmm. Can we feel challenged or we can feel nauseous? It's, it's our choice mm -hmm. of how, how that information makes us feel. But I, I want to, you know, give every credit for everyone that's doing that. Mm -hmm. And again, so long as we embark on this learning journey, mm -hmm. maybe when we look at our own post, we say, you know what, perhaps I'm not going to be doing that mm -hmm. that much. Mm -hmm. Or yes, it's a choice. Right. So I don't come, I want to come across as the social media dental police. Right. Or being the judge of, oh, this is good, this is not. Who am I? Right. Who am I? Well, you're humble. You bet I am. And, and so the one thing that we cannot overestimate, um, or we not talk much about, which you cannot see in an image, is 
a magical word, which is context. Mm. Mm. So true. That's what's hard about social media. You don't really understand the context because yes. you aren't there doing the treatment right. on the And patients. a before and after is a very, yes. very so poor way to evaluate. That's why it's tough. Plan. That's why it's tough. <clears throat> and it creates a certain false perception of what really happened here. And we don't know. And we fill, and we fill the blanks. We, 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 we try we to fill don't. in the blanks automatically. Right. Man, we, again... <laughs> So good. We could go on and on here, <laughs> and it's amazing. So, hey, I'm going to end it right here. Yeah, I think great this has been great. Hey, thank you make for sure, being Thank with you us so today. much for Ricardo for you, for you joining us again. As Pleasure always, guys. it's been amazing. And so, I want you to stay tuned to our Facebook channels, uh, Spear Education and the Dental Guys, for more of this great content. For Ricardo, for John, I'm Wes. Signing off. Thanks for listening to that bonus episode of the Dental Guys. If you want to connect with us, check us out on thedentalguys.net or hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. Thanks for listening.